There is an unbelievable pent up demand with U.S. retail equity investors to get exposure to crypto. Crypto, yet another risk on trade resonating with retail investors. Bitcoin surging 14 plus percent this week on pace for its third straight week of gains. The coin hovering around $44,000. That's nearly 30,000 higher than where prices were in January. And with spot ETFs and Bitcoin having expected sometime next year, our next guest is staying bullish on the setup for 2024. So joining us now on set is Melton Demirs, Chief Strategy Officer at CoinShares. And now we just put in a new high for the year. So I think as we look ahead, I'm calling this the most hated rally. We're going into the end of the year. Everyone's tired of hearing about crypto, but baby, we are so back. This is the biggest opportunity we've ever been given. I've said that all the way from 2020 onwards. And in fact, I said it all the way back in 2012. It's the biggest macro trade of all time. Don't fuck this up. There you have it, everybody. Rao Paul telling us not to mess this up. I love watching that guy have a couple drinks and answer questions about cryptocurrency. Super fun. Welcome to DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Thank you for stopping by. On this channel, we love simple crypto passive income. And we love blockchains with utility, use cases, and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right over there at DeFi Divi on Twitter. All right, today we are going to, well, you mean it's, it's a fun time right now. We're on the precipice of life-changing wealth. If you've been in the cryptocurrency space for a little while, if you dollar cost average down in this last bear market, which is over, I'm pretty, it's pretty safe to say we are in a bull run. Uh, you could very well be on the precipice of life-changing wealth. Super fun. Friends are going to come in and they're going to tell you how you got lucky. You got lucky with crypto. But you know, <laughs> no, I didn't get lucky. I mean, there is luck involved. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you studied. You studied fundamentals. You studied, you know, you take the time to learn what a blockchain actually is, what the purpose of a blockchain is, uh, which is a pretty interesting, uh, it can be hard to define the purpose of a blockchain. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think the purpose of a blockchain is. The best definition I heard actually is from an old school book called uh, Blockchain Basics. And the purpose is to achieve and maintain integrity in a purely distributed system that consists of unknown numbers of peers with unknown reliable, reliability and trustworthiness. Wow, that's a mouthful, but you know, that makes the most sense to me. Uh, and basically you're talking about the ability to uh, maintain that integrity of a of a peer to peer network and to track ownership it's the first major use case is to track ownership of something digital and bitcoin did it with bitcoin tokens it's so interesting to watch how this space is going to evolve but it helps to know the purpose of a blockchain because now when we can use that that core purpose to evaluate businesses what's this business building on here like when we're looking at projects like HBAR, Hedera Hashgraph, you know, known for its unparalleled speed and transaction volume, enabling businesses to build really unique blockchain applications such as supply chain tracking and centralized medical records and all kinds of stuff I've talked about before. And you took the time to research projects like XRP where you see, wow, this ledger, even though it's older, it might not be as fast as something like Hedera. This one is positioned as the blockchain for cross-border payments and settlements because the biggest fintech companies in the world are building on it. So you've done that research and you, you, you're sticking to your convictions. Or when you, talk, you take a chance on like something newer like Flare Networks and you look at their tokens like Flare and Songbird and you're like, wow, this Songbird thing provides a real network where we can see if features are good, but we're doing it with real money. So there is a network effect here and there's a much lower supply. And this thing is key in, in making sure things like the uh, very unique F asset systems works and all of their core data protocols like the, the time series Oracle and the state connector. Uh, and the bridging coming with layer cakes, so much cool stuff there. And you've, took the, you've taken the time to research that and you've been in it for a while and now it's starting to turn around. It's starting to, you know, we're, there's a shift and it's super exciting waking up, checking the prices. So how do we not mess this up? How do we make sure we stay 
we stay the course. So this is a mess, right? I mean, this, this is a basic financial crisis 2.0, if you will. You're basically putting your money in one asset that we know is already troubled. I think the 10,000 break to 9,000 would be a case of the all out bloodbath that would actually mm. put in the bottom. Very short term in the next week or two, I think I'm bullish on the stock market, bullish on crypto. But then if you zoom out, I do think you still have further downside. Minimum target is 20,000. Maximum worst case scenario on Bitcoin is 12,000. There'll be a bottom somewhere, but no one knows where it is. So don't wait for their call to make a purchase. You, if you wanna learn trading, contact Blockchain Backer, ask him what books he read, buy those books, read them and do what he does. Uh, that way you can make your own decisions if you love trading on what, what, what you think is coming up. I think that is really cool if you're a trader. I'm an investor, so, but for you, but some people get it mixed and a lot of people who are actually, well, I just wanna, you know, have life-changing wealth and be an investor in cryptocurrency. They, they look to traders and they get hooked into what traders are calling it. Maybe look to macro, listen to people like Raul Paul, get into stuff like, you know, there's so many cool stats, get into fundamentals, network effect, uh, transaction volume, number of account addresses, uh, inflows versus outflows, so many things. And we're gonna get into that deep in this channel. We've, all, we've been into it for a while doing a higher level stuff and it's, it's my favorite topic. Fundamentals are my favorite topic, but basically sticking to your convictions, ignoring the bottom and top callers. If you're an investor, ignoring the traders basically, except for maybe when to take a long-term exit, don't chase the candles. And blah, 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 blah. You are experiencing the classic medical condition known as FOMO, as the French would say. And FOMO means that you are seeing other bags that are not your own, outperforming your own bags. And you think, I must catch that runaway train. And I too can become rich like those people. And you will lose your ass. Not that Avalanche is not good but you will always buy late. Have conviction in what you have. Observe over time, not over the last two weeks because Avalanche has gone up more than your bag of ETH. And ask yourself the question, is ETH going to go up over the next two years? And will it go up a significant amount? Could it just be lagging? Could there be a big switcher going on? selling ETH and buying Sol, could that be over soon? Could the ETH ETF change that? Stick with your conviction. Do what's true to you, but don't do FOMO. Like if you bought XRP and you watch, you're, in, you're, you're mostly weighted in XRP and you're watching Solana take off and you're watching uh, Polygon take off. You're watching Avalanche take off. Alex Becker is talking about Avalanche, how it's the biggest gaming token in the world. And it is, it's doing well, it's doing great. And you're sitting there with your XRP. And now if you're a human, like I am, you're, you feel FOMO and you're like, oh man, FOMO. It's like, I got to catch that because XRP is not going anywhere. Well, it just was involved in a gigantic lawsuit that did give it a slowdown didn't really get to participate too much in the last bull run. So that's not following its, its previous cycle dynamics. Crypt cryptocurrency is highly risky, by the way. But yeah, sticking to our convictions, making sure we don't mess this up. And finally, layering in and layering out. We've just had a gigantic bear market to layer in, meaning dollar cost average down the entire way. For those who are able to take the pain, you are, you get to enjoy euphoria for probably the next six, you know, at least 12 to 16 months, maybe longer, because this could be the biggest crypto bull run we're ever going to have with the Bitcoin ETF coming into fruition. We believe in January, that's the word out on the street. So that's exciting. Obviously nothing I'm saying here is investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. So don't take anything I am saying that way. Don't, uh, you know, none of this is investment advice, but just for you so you can think for yourselves. If you're newer to crypto, a lot of people watching my channel probably aren't newer, but some are, there's new people coming in now. So want to, uh, 
I want to see everybody here do really well. It's going to be super exciting these next, um, you said this next year and a half, two years. It's going to be a great time. So let's stick to our convictions. We might have to drop some friends who tell us we got lucky. Maybe some might be keepers. We'll have to figure that out. It depends. If anyone's trying to like bring you down because and belittle all the research and work you've done, and, you know, maybe they could, maybe that person could be a dropper. Maybe it could be time for some new friends. You'll figure it out. Obviously, we have to weigh each friend. Each friend is unique, but it's going to be a fun time. You are going to be in a good spot. All right, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. I will see you in the next one.